On October 29, 2017, 19-year-old college student Kaylee Mondati arrived at a Texas hospital. She was nearly naked, bruised, and not breathing. Her sometime boyfriend, Mark Howerton, told doctors they'd taken ecstasy at a music festival and she passed out after consensual sex in his car. Her parents rushed to her side. Doctor came in and we asked, what's the prognosis? And he said, there is none. He said, she's not coming out of this. I'm telling you right now, I'm sorry. The medical examiner ruled that Kaylee had died from blunt force trauma to the face and to the head and Mark Howerton is arrested. At the first trial in 2019, the jury was unable to reach a verdict and a mistrial was declared. Before Howerton's second trial in 2023, Kaylee's stepfather Lawrence Baitland and mother Allison Steele made it their mission to get justice for their daughter. You became investigators. We did. Yes. I knew we needed to show what happened in that car. The jury needed to know how it happened. Allison, a scientist, and Lawrence, a NASA engineer, both got to work. I spent hours and hours studying autopsy photos, and I really fixated on one of the autopsy photos that showed an impact on Kaylee's head, you know, right in front of her ear. There was a small dot above Kaylee's right ear. She also had deep bruising above her left ear. Kaylee's parents believe her bruises tell a story. We believe that of all of the injuries, the blows that he landed on her, the fatal one occurred when he reached from his driver's seat, hit her in the left ear, and drove her head into the window and onto the lock button of the car. In fact, in a recorded audio interview with police the day Kaylee died, Howerton admitted he had previously done just that. Did you ever push Kaylee's head up against the window? Um, I pushed her and she hit the window one time. That was over a week ago, yes. So in many respects, it was like same song, second verse. They'd need proof to convince a jury. Kaylee's parents headed to a used car lot where Allison posed in a car similar to the Mercedes Howerton drove that night. And I photographed her head in different positions while I'm holding the autopsy images, trying to see if they match up with the door and it's a near perfect match. Lawrence decided to go a step further by building a 3D model of his stepdaughter's head to bring them closer to having actual proof. So then I loaded this 3D modeling program. The first thing you can do is you can create a solid out of that 3D mesh and then and you can project an image onto it. This gave me the confidence to go to the next step, which was to seek out the killer's car. Howerton sold the car in 2018. Lawrence tracked down the new owner and bought the car. What'd you think of that? Uh, well, this is new. This is uh, not something I've been uh, accustomed to hearing uh, in, in other cases. Show me what, what you believe went down. Let's go up sure. here to the passenger side. The car Kaylee was fatally injured in is sitting in her parents' driveway. Lawrence says driving it home was a haunting experience. It's torturous, um, but it's also you know, she was showing us what happened. You know, she was guiding us to this car. And you believe that he struck her. When he did, she came over to this knob, her, hit, her head hit it. Now you notice when you push it down, it doesn't go flush, it doesn't go, it doesn't go flat. Right, this will not retract fully, no matter how hard you hit it. Kaylee's parents decided to commission a video to demonstrate their theory in court. They went and found two actors, a male and a female, to dress the parts. They were um, similar size, similar weight. If we did the reconstruction ourselves, it would be considered biased and probably thrown out or at least discredited. So they hired a private investigator to produce the demonstration. They didn't even look at it in case they were called to testify about it. The following reenactment may be disturbing for some viewers. The video shows three angles of what Kaylee's parents and their experts believe happened. Would showing a jury a video like this potentially help the prosecution's case if, if it's allowed? Jurors are very visual. It makes it easier for them. It shows how it can happen. And it answers a number of the questions that the jury had in the first trial. 